Hey, it's Mike over at FishYourAssOff.com and today what we're talking about is snook fishing around docks and bridges. More specifically, docks, dock and bridge pilings. Because those pilings are really what holds the fish. I mean, there'll be grouper and sheep's head and mangrove snapper and redfish and flounder and of course snook. All kinds of fish because it's a great place to ambush their prey. And if it's a really old one, it's covered in sponges and grasses and barnacles and oysters and other fish are attracted to that. It's little baby whatever fish, crabs, shrimp. So it's almost like its own little ecosystem. So they're really great places to fish. And I'm just going to cover today the best lures in my opinion and the best baits to use for getting at those big snook because those big fat sow female snook they're down deep and they're usually when you talk to somebody hey where'd you catch your biggest bat your biggest uh, snook ever they're going to be like oh yeah i was fishing the bridge or i was fishing uh this dock or or an inlet when they're spawning but those are where you're probably going to catch your personal best big huge monster snook so let's just go ahead and cover some of this and the techniques to use Okay, first of all, they're going to be in the bottom of the water column. That's where the big ones are going to be. So here's my rendition of your typical bottom. And here's your dock or bridge pilings right there. And here's your snook. They're facing into the current. The current's going this way, which means you have to present your lure or bait coming from this way because they're facing this way. If you were to cast this way, you'd come up from behind them and spook them. So you're always casting up current and bringing your bait back to you with the current and me personally I usually do it about the same speed as the current so a very slow retrieve I'm going to show you what I think the best baits are if you're fishing uh, dirty water number one so an outgoing tide when the water's dirty right before dark and first thing in the morning and at night okay so all during the middle of the day, these probably aren't going to be as effective, but on those low light scenarios and the dirty water scenarios for down deep fishing for a uh, big snook, it is really hard to beat your basic flare hawk jig. Now I make these myself. Um, that's why they're in the fancy wrappers. Uh, but I, I pour these myself and these are the only colors you need too. You have chartreuse, white and pink you know and i use the white when the water's more clear and i use the other two colors when the water's more dirty simple as that i don't think you need more than three colors those that i make range from an ounce to let's see an ounce to two ounces i, I just never have the need to go any heavier than that but where, where you are has a lot of current you know fitting through a real small area, like a real small inlet with like a full moon tide or something like that. You might need three ounces, but for me, one to two ounces, one, one and a half, and two, it's all I need, all I need. And the way you fish this is real simple. Here's your bridge pilings, you're alongside of them, you're casting parallel to them, you cast it up, and you can either swim it or bounce it on the bottom to these fish that are there. Up current, Bounce about again. I do it about the same speed as the current. Is how I do it. So here it is, right here. So, so the current's coming this way. So you cast this way. And you basically bounce it like this. You want to keep it within about 24 inches of the bottom. And again, same about the same speed as the current. That's what works best for me. I'm going to show you the other lures that'll work all the time. I mean, these will work. Don't get me wrong. These flare hawk jigs, but. Um, yeah, usually you want you want the water a little stained at the very least for, for them to work the best. And nighttime, forget about it. If you're fishing by lights or an inlet, you just you can't beat that. But all right, let's cover some more. All right, here's another bait that I really like, another lure. This is a DOA Big Ones Terror Eyes. And this is just a bigger version of their Terror Eyes that they offer. And this is a great bait. This is another great, great bait to get at these snook on the bottom. 
And you can fish that bait in three feet of water or 30 feet of water. So same, same with the, the flare hog jigs. You know, you can fish them in all those different water depths and catch snow. The one I have tied onto my, my um, rod and reel most of the time is this, however. Basically a swim bait, you know, it's a three inch shad paddle tail, a DOA cow. I like the dark ones when the water's kind of murky. I like a, a lighter version when the water's clean. This is a glow, I think. Or uh, you want to use a pearl or something like that, so a swim bait. Here's another great swim bait that you can use for fishing around these bridges and these um, dock pilings. I'm usually fishing in shallower water. I don't fish bridges a lot. I'll fish deeper docks, so maybe 10 feet deep, 12 feet deep, something like that. I don't do a lot of, of actual bridge fishing. And I just don't need those heavier weights for that. You know, these, these are mainly for fishing in the inlets, but it's the same deal. You know, you fish for a snook the same way. You want to fish by the structure is really all you're trying to do. So you're going to get it out there and bounce it, bounce it, bounce it, and get it to where you need to go. I mean, it's as simple as that. Live baits. When you're fishing with live baits, you, I like to have a croaker, a small, you know, to medium size mullet is another one, any sort of white bait, a grunt. I mean, you can fish just about anything, a pinfish. It's going to be great and the difference is you're going to have to be anchored up for that for the most part and you're going to have to pitch your your bait and sink it right there so if you're fishing shallow water i mean heck you could even wait it if you wanted to it's like find a good spot with a lot of flow which has some good movement there uh, docks and you can just send a, a live bait out and just sit there and catch tons of snook because what the snook will do with the moving tide is they'll just kind of Cruise this dock, eh, not much here, all right. Now cruise the next dock, not much here, especially in the higher parts of the tide. So you can really get at them in between these docks. And if I've sat there before up on a thing and you'll just watch them, they just move. My twos and threes. 20 minutes later, another few move through. I mean, you might have 20 snook cruise your little dock where you're sitting at in two hours, two and a half hours. So they're moving. A lot of people think they're just sitting there. They're not just sitting there. Around bridges a lot of times they'll hold up if there's enough flow and bait there for them. But the docks, I just see them cruising until they find the one that has the right amount of food for them. So that's how you do it. You don't need a lot of baits. You really don't need a lot of baits and lures to catch these snook around these docks and these bridge pilings. Hope that helps you. Uh, you can find out more of this information right on our website. Just go to fishyourassoff.com. You want to go to the Pro Tips page. And that has articles and videos all about snook and redfish, tarp, and all kinds of different things. But that's it for today. So I uh, hope you like it. I hope you learned something. And until next time, we'll see you then. All right. Bye-bye.